Superconductors are the material which does not have any resistance. This idea of superconductors was discovered way back in 1911. But in all these years, we were always stuck to these very, very, very low temperatures. But then, for the last uh, six, seven years, we start to see the very much like increasing in this transition temperature, going, uh, getting close to the room temperature. But there's a caveat. This happened at very, very high pressures until now. If we had zero resistance conductors, we could uh, have trains that could be levitated and transit people from one corner of the country to the other with almost no power. It would completely change the way electric cars work. Magnetic resonance imaging is quite expensive. That would tremendously change also. Even fusion could potentially be dramatically changed, our quest for fusion. We sort of imagine that this could be a real revolution in technology. The new discovery is the first time we are demonstrating a material that superconduct at room temperature and near ambient pressure. Before, the pressure was 270 gigapascal. The new discovery, now we are at one gigapascal from 270 to one gigapascal. We don't need the diamond anime cell now. There are different other ways to mimic this pressures by using strain engineering or very, very various different techniques. So that's why we are very excited that this is now in a region that we can easily access in terms of pressure and in terms of temperature. There are both worldwide implications and certainly implications for our community. We envision the clear possibility of making Rochester a center for everything that is related to superconductivity. We are gradually stepping from uh, uh, fundamental research into the engineering. And uh, with the engineering will come, obviously, the industrial applications. So I think this will bring us as close as possible to the realization of what we consider the holy grail of superconductivity having superconductivity at room temperature and conditions that can be then transferred into any industrial uh, production, industrial applications. So these kind of huge claims need a careful, thorough examination. So because of that, it went through a rigorous review process. Multiple referees, multiple rounds, and we made all the data and everything that we discuss in the paper, our methods and everything very open, so everybody can uh, take a look at it and go through it and really make sure that they come to the same conclusion. I, I never seen a material transform color like this. So it's, it's a blue color. So you put it in the diamond and it's cell, you squeeze it. This blue turn into a very bright uh, pink color. And then you squeeze further and become bright red. I was joking with my students that we're going to call it Red Matter because of the movie Star Trek. Oh, it's Red Matter. One of the things I find really exciting about this work is that it involved not only faculty at the University of Rochester, but also graduate students and undergraduate students took part in this research. I work with the testing of the materials, so I use the diamond anvil cells to test spectroscopy to see how the properties change with pressure. Everyone in my group, not just one single student, every graduate student, every postdoc, every undergraduate student, everybody just put into this project. It's a success of a team. Credit to them. So this, this belongs to them. Machine learning can be applied to almost anything. When you apply it to superconductors, it's about collecting the data that revolves around what predicts a superconductor. What I've been doing is trying to create a machine learning model that's going to take in a lot of data that has already been found about superconductors and use it as a platform to make more predictions about what can be superconductors and just help make everything a lot more efficient. We need to be able to scale this up so we have large-scale materials that also exhibit superconducting properties. We have to think about how do you manufacture these materials? How do you make them commercially viable and usable so that we can achieve some of the promise that this discovery holds? That's what we're about at the Hadron School of Engineering and Applied Sciences and at the University of Rochester. It's really why we are a research institution, is to find these new discoveries, to uh, build new machines, to develop new tools, to help humanity move forward. 
there's a lot to lot to be done uh, this is just a first step you know very beginning uh, the, the the starting point uh, for many many discoveries to come <laughs>